Hello everyone and welcome to Forensic Extract and today we will be speaking about snakes, snake bites and their management. So stay tuned for the full video and please don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon. For the 2022, total 3971 snake species are there. Among them 600 are venomous and 200 are able to kill humans. In India, around 300 species are there. Among them, 60 are venomous, 40 plus are mildly venomous, and 180 are non-venomous snake species. Understand the basic anatomy of uh, the venom gland, in the, and they are modified salivary glands. Okay, so you can see in the photograph, this is the venom gland which is surrounded by the compressor muscle. Okay, and it's having a primary venom duct and the accessory gland and the secondary venom duct that opens into the fang okay and fang is surrounded by fang sheath this behavior of preserving the venom or injecting the bite without uh, venom is known as the venom metering okay so snake bite without injection of venom is known as snake uh, dry bite and it is the phenomenon which is known as venom metering now, as you can see in the photograph, these are the fang marks, okay, two fang marks at the distance of 1 to 2 cm. This is the typical fang marks of uh, fang mark of a venomous snake. And in the other picture, you can see multiple punctured wounds. So, they are in the circular fashion and they are in both the sides. So, they are bite marks of non-poisonous snake difference between the poisonous and non-poisonous snake is very much important because the management is totally different okay poisonous snake can be fatal the head of venomous snake is triangular with a pit we'll discuss the function of pit and head in non-poisonous snake is round and they don't have any pit there is a rattle in poisonous snake okay rattle is there at the end of the tail so rattle will be the same in some venomous snake but it is never seen in non-venomous snake. Their pupil is either elliptical or vertical or it is rounded in non-venomous snake. Tail ends in a rattle or not okay. Tail, tail usually abruptly tapers in venomous snake and it tapers gradually into a thin end in non-venomous snake. Venomous snakes are of distinct color and they are mostly brightly colored okay but non venomous snakes are less colorful and only one solid color is there tail is having characteristic pattern of scales in single row okay but they are seen in double rows in non venomous snake like this now you can see the shape of the head is round in non venomous snake like this or it is triangular in venomous snake. Similarly, the pupil is vertical or elliptical in venomous snake and it is round in non-venomous snake. The tail scales are seen single row and they are in double row in non-poisonous snakes. Now, one of the characteristic feature of a type of snake that is known as karet, we will discuss uh, about it later on, but the characteristic feature is the hexagonal scales on the middle of the back of this snake. Now the belly scales of the snakes, okay, small belly scales are seen in non-poisonous snakes like shown in the photograph. Now the narrow belly scales are also seen, they are not involving the complete width of the belly as seen in the poisonous snake. You can see the belly scales are broad and covering the entire width of the belly. Now the different fangs are there, like in viper the fangs are canalized uh, fangs okay the canal will be seen inside the fangs or they are guttered or grooved fang like in case of cobra okay but the fangs are solid in non poisonous snake okay so these are different types of fangs now remember the black mamba injects up to 12 times the lethal dose of human in each bite okay so this is the most poisonous snake and the this is the fastest acting venom uh, of any snake injected by the black mamba and human are still larger than the usual prey of black mamba so it takes 20 minutes for human to die 
Now there are common uh, five species of snakes like one is the king cobra, then the naja naja that is known as common cobra, rachel viper, karet and so scaled viper. They are the commonly available poisonous snakes. Now in India, the death as a result of snake bite is mostly accidental in nature. Okay? So most of the snake bites are due to accidents. So, the first type of snake is the common cobra that is known as naja naja. This is the commonly seen in India, Sri Lanka and Burma, usually uh, the length of the common cobra is between 1.5 to 2 meters. Okay. Now cobra varies in color from cream to black or uh, generally they are brownish in color. Okay. The hood, it, the typical feature of the cobra is the hood and the typical spectacle mark on its underside and Two dark spots are there at times like you can see in the photograph this is the typical spectacle sign and the two dark spots are the characteristic feature of common cobra naja naja. Now the second type of snake is the king cobra this is found in hilly areas like uh, south India, Odisha, Assam and Himalaya. The length is 2.5 to 4.5 uh, meters head is flat with a hood but no spectacle as you can see like in the photograph there is no two round uh, marks and there is no spectacle in case of this king cobra this is the snake which eats smaller snakes okay now the third variety of snake is the common curry these are the snakes which are present throughout the india and they are mostly near dwelling houses the size may be uh, between 1.5 meters okay to 2 meters and they are still black in color. Single and double row bands may be seen and mostly the belly is creamy white in color like you can see this is the common karet. One of the variety of the karet is known as bandaid karet that is slightly longer that is the 2.5 to 3.5 meters in size and they bear alternate jet black to yellow bands like you can see in the photograph and the black mark on the neck is spreading up to the eye this is the important feature that this mark is spreading up to the eye and it is the deadly poisonous snake that is known as banded karet now another uh, snake is the pit viper the pit is the basically heat sensing organ okay heat sensing pit is there that senses the warm blooded prey in the dark usual length is 30 to 100 centimeters of these snakes they are seldom fatal to human okay their body is usually flat and they are having triangular head like you can see in the photograph their head is triangular uh, this is the pit you can see between the eye and nostril this is the pit this is the heat sensing organ in these snakes now another snake is the rachel viper this is the heavily bodied snake okay this is having narrow neck and triangular head again the head is triangular and three longitudinal regular chains are the characteristic feature like you can see in the photograph these are the three regular chain one two and three chains are the characteristic feature of the snake and these scales are quite rough or either they are yellowish to brown usual length is one to 1.5 meters this is also found throughout the india okay usually nostril is bigger than any other snake the tail is short which divided shields and belly scales are broad which is the characteristic feature of poisonous snake. They makes the loud hissing sound before striking the enemy. So this is the uh, Rachel viper. Now another viper is the saw scale viper. These are the viper snakes which are smallest of all four snakes and they are just growing just a foot. The process by which the saw scaled viper rubs body part because the scales are very sharp and they rub these scales body parts and making a sound that is known as stridulation. Okay, so these are the basic types of poisonous snakes. Now the type of venom and type of the signs and symptoms. What type of uh, venom is pro being produced by a particular snake and what are the signs and symptoms they will produce? Now illapidi are the cobra or the karet. Okay, they are neurotoxic. Neurotoxic. Uh, venom is there. The primary toxicity is for the respiratory and cardiac center in the brain. What are the signs and symptoms? There is muscle weakness and spreading paralysis, ptosis and paralysis of extraocular muscle like you can see in the photograph. Labored breathing because of respiratory failure and patient remain conscious but patient is not able to speak. 
and death is ultimately due to respiratory paralysis. So, this is the function of venom produced by neurotoxic snakes like cobra and karet. Again, the viper. This snake produces uh, the hematotoxic or vasculotoxic venom. Generally, it causes hemoglobinuria, but it hemorrhages because of coagulation defect and bleeding gums, hemoptysis, and cold and clammy skin, like you can see in the photograph. And death is due to cardiac failure. Yeah, obviously, fang marks will be there in case of snake bite. Intense local reaction swelling oozing out of hemolyzed blood and blisters are characteristically seen in viper bite. Local phenomena are more commonly in viper bites as compared to neurotoxic snakes. Another type of snakes are the sea snakes, hydrophidae, they are myotoxic. Okay, there is little bit uh, local sign and symptoms, local pain and swelling may be there. Weakness of skeletal muscle, myalgia and stiffness is seen. Trismus, that is the lock jaw will be seen and flaccid paralysis of the muscles leading to tosis. Myoglobinuria, renal failure may be there and death is due to cardiac arrest or paralysis of respiratory muscles. Now the sign and symptoms. So remember most common sign and symptom uh, uh, is fright, fear of early and rapid and unpleasant death. This is the fright. The most common symptom is the fright. Other symptoms like the general symptoms may, may be dizziness. Faintness, increased thirst, headache, vision may be blurry and the symptoms like fever, severe pain and local sight may be there, respiratory difficulties are there, uh, wound, sight, bleeding, fang marks, discoloration, burning sensation, swelling, edema may be seen, bleeding spots may be seen on the body, numbness, tingling, sweating may be seen, okay. Heart and uh, vessels, rapid pulses will be seen and there is cardiac failure. So, Low blood pressure and severe shock is another symptom. Muscular changes are convulsion may be there, loss of coordination, muscle weakness is also seen. Gastric nausea, vomiting, sign and symptoms are there, there may be uh, intestinal uh, disturbances leading to diarrhea. So, these are the general sign and symptoms of in any case of snake bite, the local reaction in the form of edema, as you can see in the photograph, the limb is swollen, the finger is swollen, this uh, hand of the child is also swollen, the, uh, the blisters are also characteristically seen in viper bite. Again, if this snake bite is not treated and the uh, injected venom is larger in quantity, then it can cause local necrosis if there is no uh, early management has been done. Now, first to do is to seek medical advice, okay. Always seek medical advice in snake bite. Do not create any panic, just seek medical advice. This is very much important. Just stay calm or inform your uh, supervisor. Now, antivenom is the treatment choice. This is the treatment of uh, choice for serious snake and venomation, okay. The antivenom can be started sooner, uh, irreversible damage from venom can be stopped. Okay, because this is the uh, the substance which acts against the venom. So this antivenom is the key for snake bite. Now always it is considerable to take a photograph of a snake from the safe distance can help in identification of the the species of the snake or the type of snake whether this is poisonous or non poisonous snake so that it can help in treating the patient. Apply first aid while waiting for EMS staff. The patient should uh, lay or sit down with the limb in neutral position. Always remember to keep your limb in neutral position. Always remove rings and watches before swelling starts. Cover the bite with clean and dry dressing. Okay. Make the leading edge of the tenderness and swelling. Suppose this is the limb and person is having swelling and tenderness over there. So, make a mark over there, okay, whether it is progressing or regressing. So, make a mark and note down the time. So, just, just note down the progression or regression of the swelling and tenderness. Now, one technique that is very important in uh, snake bite cases that is the pressure immobilization technique. So, if victim is expected to reach the hospital in more than 30 minutes but less than 3 hours then this technique is very much important. So, cream bandage may be applied by a qualified medical personnel till the patient is shifted to hospital. This is very important. The bandage is wrapped over the bitten area. This is important.
front as well as the entire limb with the limb placed in a splint like you can see in the photograph uh, like this the, so uh, this is the uh, the beaten area somewhere there so this crepe bandage is wrapped uh, just above the uh, beaten area okay and over the beaten area also and with a splint so, so, so that limb can be in, uh, placed in a neutral position and this method of wrapping the bandage in snake bite cases is known, is known as Sutherland method. Okay. Now, what is the principle of wrapping the bandage? It minimizes the moment of venom because it obliterates the lymphatics. Okay. Make sure do not obliterate the uh, venous system because it's, it, it can cause gangrene or the avascular necrosis, if the pressure is too much, then it can cause uh, avascular necrosis of the distal limb. Now, it should allow one finger between the limb and bandage, that is the most appropriately placed crib bandage in pressure or mobilization technique, if it is allowing one finger between the bandage and your limb. So, what are the don'ts of uh, snake bite? Remember, do not pick up the snake and try to trap it because it can bite again and the even even the not even the dead snake do not handle even the dead snake or the decapitated head do not wait for the symptoms to appear immediately inform your supervisor or immediate emergency treatment is required medical help is uh, required so do not slash the wound with knife or cut it in any way do not try to suck out the venom okay do not apply ice or immerse the uh, wound into the water or do not uh, drink alcohol as a painkiller, neither uh, the aspirin or ibuprofen, naproxen, such kind of pain relievers are suggested because ultimately they increase the uh, coagulation defect and further bleeding. Do not apply any electric shock or any folk medicine, folk therapy. Straight away go to your nearest medical facility and get the antivenom injected depending on the severity of the bite and the and the, uh, the type of snake. Now, the, as per the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare under National Health Mission, there is a standard protocol of snake bite cases. Okay. So, what is that protocol? Suppose we have suspected a snake bite. Okay. So, most of the snake bites are non-venomous. Around 70% cases are non-venomous. Most of them are asymptomatic. Maybe some anxiety, palpitation, tachycardia and paresthesia is there. So, you need not to do anything. Just counsel the patient and uh, wait for some time. Now, if venomous snake are there, so most of the bites tend to 80% bites are dry bite. So, manage them as the bites by non-venomous snake. But if the patient is symptomatic and the predominant symptoms are the progressive painful swelling of the limb. So, you are suspecting a viper bite, local necrosis, echimosis, blistering, painful swelling and compartment syndrome are developing. So, always go for injection of anti snake venom now neuroparalytic bites are there so patient is having ptosis diplopia dysarthria dysphonia dysphagia paralysis all these symptoms are there they are suggestive of neuroparalytic venom cobra and karet so inject anti snake venom along with atropine and neostigmine with mechanical ventilation vasculotoxic snake bites can be due to Russell viper or so scaled viper. They are also present with the bleeding, diffuse intravascular coagulation, shock, acute kidney injury and all. So, always go for anti-snake venom, support treatment or dialysis in case of kidney failure or blood transfusion. Now, the myotoxic bites can be treated, uh, the anti-snake venom and supported treatment and dialysis and the symptoms will be muscle ache, muscle swelling, involuntary contraction of the muscle and compartment syndrome and all. They are used uh, caused by flat-tailed sea snakes. Now, if the occult bite is there, there is no history of bite. So, most of these cases are due to current bite. So, neuroparalytic symptoms will be there with minimum or no local sign. So, always go for ASV and atropine and neostigmine injection with ventilation. So, this is the standard treatment protocol given by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare under National Health Mission. So, for reaction of anti-snake venom, suppose there is a reaction, allergic reaction or anaphylactic reaction to anti-snake venom, you can inject adrenaline 0.5 milligram intramuscular or 0.01 milligram per kg in children. 
specific uh, anti snake venom for the sea snake or pit viper is not available in india however asv may be having some advantage by cross reaction so always uh, it is preferable to inject the available anti snake venom the atropine 0.6 mg followed by neostigmine in neuroparalytic venom injection 1.5 mg to be given iv strat or in children injection of atropine 0.05 mg per kg followed by injection of neostigmine 0.04 mg per kg iv remember to repeat the neostigmine dose 0.5 mg and with atropine every 30 ml for 5 doses thereafter we have to taper the dose at 1 hour 2 hour 6 hour and 12 hours okay the positive response is measured by 50% or more recovery of process in 1 hour so this is the control to check the progression or the recovery from process if there is no response after third dose stop the atropine and neostigmine so this is the standard treatment protocol of treating a case of snake bite now what is this anti venom anti venom is basically prepared by immunizing horses with the venom from poisonous snake we will take out the poison from poisonous snake and injected it in uh, into the horse and the serum produced that serum has been extracted and anti venom has been prepared so anti venom may be species uh, specific it's related to a particular species of snake so that is monovalent or effective against several species this is known as the polyvalent anti snake venom monovalent anti snake venom is ideal but it is important to identify a particular species but the cost and non availability is the control factor beside the difficulty of accurately identifying the offending species so that's why uh, it is less commonly used as compared to polyvalent okay so specific indications of injection of anti venom in the presence of all these symptoms other symptoms like swelling that is involving more than half of the affected limb and extensive bruising or blistering is seen local signs and symptoms are prevalent then you can go for injection of anti snake venom and progression of local lesions within 30 to 60 minutes are other indications so these are the indications of injecting anti snake venom